So guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create and manage and work with iStudy. If you are able to follow me, it's fine. Otherwise, you can look at the video and follow the steps from there. First of all, in iSCSI, you must have an iSCSI target server. In order to have this, just make sure that you go to Add Roles and Features. And within Add Roles and Features, you need to go to make sure right here uh, that under File Server Roles, under File and Storage Services Role, under File and iSCSI Services, here you should know that iSCSI target server is, in, uh, is selected. If this is not selected, iSCSI cannot exist. Now, once this is all selected, all you need to do is, First of all, you need to go into your, your, your storage. So what I did, I just went into file and storage services. So I went into file and storage services here. Within file and storage services, last option is iSCSI target. Now within this, it's saying to create an iSCSI target, start the new iSCSI virtual disk with it. So for now, the iSCSI target and no iSCSI target exists. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new target disk. So as soon as I create this, as soon as I create this, it is asking me select a volume for a disk, the disk that needs to be available to other servers. Let's say in our case, we need this X to be available to the other server. Or if you are, if you do not, if you don't have these extra disks, what we can do is we can create a new, we can add a new disk to this virtual machine and then create a volume and then use that disk. So. In our case, we're going to use either E or X. In the beginning, we added E. So if you do not have E, later on, once you're watching the video, all you need to do is go to here in VM settings. You can you can go and add a new disk. Once you go here, you just go add a new disk, and that disk appears in disk. Then you change it to volume. Once it is changed to volume, then it will automatically appear under disk. You can use X disk. You can use any disk here. It should be a disk that exists in your machine. So, for example, I'm I'm selecting E disk that we created earlier. So, in this case, I'm I'm going next here, and now I need to give a name to this disk. So here, this disk will be. Uh, I would say this is our iSCSI, iSCSI target one, ERG one. This is iSCSI target one. Uh, as we the iSCSI virtual disk, so I'm going to say this is iSCSI v disk 1. So guys, whenever you're naming something, just, just name it appropriately. For example, if it is iSCSI virtual disk, just say iSCSI virtual disk 1. And once you're creating this, next one it is saying I can see 18, 19 GB in total. In your case, whatever the disk size is, you can either take 5 GB from this, you can either take 2 GB from this, you can, you can take either full disk here. So, what, uh, so here I'm going to take full disk from this. So I'm going to create the complete virtual disk just for iSCSI, uh, iSCSI services. So as soon as you select this, guys, it is saying, would you need a new iSCSI virtual disk uh, assigned with this, this disk as a target? Or do you, uh, if you have existing targets available, you can assign it to them. Guys, since this is the first time we are creating a new target, so we'll go with the new option, new iSCSI target. That's the that's the a new iSCSI target. And then we'll click next. And here it is saying target name. What would be the target name? So here I'm going to say this is iSCSI ERG1. So I said first it was a virtual disk one. And now since it says it's a target name, I'm going to call it iSCSI target one. Now once it is iSCSI target one, all I need to do is click next on this, and here it's saying click add to specify iSCSI initiator. Now, guys, this is a very important point. Here, this is saying that which iSCSI initiator will have access to this disk. Which iSCSI initiator will have? For example, here you do not add any iSCSI initiator, then no one will have access to that disk. But in our case, guys, if you click add here, it's saying okay. So let's, let's first find out which iSCSI initiator. Now, in this case, it will go into Active Directory and search for all the computers. So let's see. If I go browse here, and then if I look for, if you have a second machine, so you all have a second machine. So find that second machine and put it here. So in my case, I'm going to bring that my client. So I have a client called WinCL1. And in your case, you have a second machine, whatever second machine is. 
if it is not connected then you then you won't be able to have it so here i'm just going to so just watch the video and later on once you have a join machine cuz cuz this is what it is it is asking that which initiator will have access to this target so in this case i'm just giving i'm just saying that uh, that client 1 will have access to this target Yes, you can give a server to. You can search for the. If you have two servers, use your second server. And in this case, you will click OK. So it has automatically selected this, and I'm going to click OK here, and then it will say, OK. So this 19 GB of this, this 19 GB of this, will be accessed by my client. Now, if you're not, if for example, you have five machines in your network, and that's the only machine you're giving access, this only machine has will have access to this. If you need that this to be accessed by four other machines, then it will have access to this. So here, in this case, guys, it's saying that this client does not have a IQN number. Guys, this IQN number is mostly automatically exists on server and not on client. So on client, you must install iSCSI initiator, then it will work. But let me check my server because I have a server here. I have a server here, and now I'm going to browse and look for my server. So in server, Wnt SRV one, which is my DC. So I'm going to select my DC. Let's see. So my DC, it is now going to that DC and seeing that if 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 iSCSI is working. So guys, as we know. that on server side you need to have iscsi target and iscsi initiator automatically exists on all machine except client on client you must install that component but here my my second server automatically has it i added this everybody understand that this is this only that machine can have access to that disk so next and here as soon as it is saying what type of authentication do you need Now you can specify these special authentications, guys. We are not specifying any special authentication. Just Windows authentication. It will use because I'm not I'm not selecting any of these authentication. And here confirmation and create. Now now guys now my iSCSI target is created. iSCSI target is created. Now here just one more time for your review. Just for one one, one more time for your review. What I'm going to do is. I'm going to create another iSCSI virtual desk. So this time, I'm creating a new virtual desk, a new iSCSI target, and all you need to do, you need to go to iSCSI, go into virtual desk, and here first I created a disk out of E, and this time I'm going to create disk out of X. So my X is 85 GB. I'm going to create a new iSCSI disk for let's say 10 GB out from this. So here I will go next. And I will name it. So this is iSCSI virtual desk. So I'm going to say this is iSCSI v disk two. So this is two. And then next. And here, this is my total capacity. I'm only using 10 GB from this. So I'm only using 10 GB from this. I'm not using the complete disk. I'll be using 10 GB. And then next. And now it's asking me which computer should have access to this disk. Now, if you have other computers, they all can access it. But here, since I have only one computer that has this, this this is automatically selected. I would say let this computer have access to this. Now here, uh, no, hold on. This is saying that this is my target. So I can add this to the existing target, or I can create a new target. Now existing target means it will be one target and two disks there. So I'll just select the existing target here. and then since it is existing target guys this target is only accessed by my first server if you need other servers to have access then i need to create a new target so here i selected this and i created it so as soon as it is created guys the main important part the which part the main part. important part is now how do you access it from the client machine so on this side i just created a iscsi target I I created a disk and I give this guy access. Now all I need to do is so here if you see I have now two disks available E available X available. So they are they are not connected. Why? Because from the other side nobody initiated a connection. So now what I'm going to do I'm going to go to my server number one and first of all I need the IP address of this server. So here on this server my IP address is. 20 my ip address is 20 so guys remember on the client side all you need to do 
you need to go into I study initiator and use this IP address. You need to go on the client side, you are going into I study initiator. So on the other server, all I need to do is I need to go into I study initiator. So in order to access I study initiator, sorry, it is a server, yes. So on my second server, on my second server, I'm going into tools, and in my tools, there is there is one tool called iStudy Initiator. So this tool automatically exists in all the servers. So in my server, I'm going into tool and iStudy Initiator. Guys, make sure that this is the client side. This is not the server side. So on client side, when I go into this, it's saying this service is not running. Do you want to run the service? We'll say yes, run the service. So as soon as the service starts running, it would open the tool and it will be it will ask me, guys, right here. It will automatically ask me for the target IP address. And now here I'm going to use the target IP address, which is 100.20. 100.20. Now, guys, just look at this. It says quick connect. As soon as it says quick connect, it will automatically find out the target that we selected, that we made. It says login succeeded and done. And right here, if you if I go into discovery, it it connects to this and in volumes and devices. As soon as you as uh, do auto config, it should automatically bring disks here. The disks that are created in that. So there were two. That's why you can see two. Now in this, so this is how it automatically connects and it is connected. And once you click OK, if you if you click OK, now guys, right here. So on the second server, on the target server, on, on the target server, let's go back to target server and just go to file and service and iSCSI right here. It is now these two, these two are now connected to the other server. Guys, so as you can see, they're both set connected now. They're both set connected now. Now, if I go back to my server, now how can I access them? Last part is, how to access them. So, first of all, on target, I created the disk. Then I created I study target. How many targets did I create? Two. 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 And then I went to the server. I just, in the server, I just set up the I study initiator IP address. It automatically selected, picked up, and connected. Now, the last thing is, how can I use them? Guys, on this server, on this server, on server number one, how many disks do, did I have to start with? Just one. Now, if I go into my file and storage services, and if I go into my volume, I still see only the default disk configuration, C. But if I go into my disks here, now you are able to see both of the disks that are just added from the target site. But on this server, we never added any new disks. So these, this is 10 GB and 19.3 GB that are coming from the target server. And all you need to do is, and all, no, not for now, because you need to format them. So first of all, yes, you won't be able to see them in computer unless you make them volume. Guys, these are raw disks. Remember, we started from a raw disk. These both disks are provided as raw disks, and they won't be, they won't appear automatically. Now, in order to use them, I need to right click on them. First of all, bring them online, just like we do it in normal in normal disk, bring them online, and then what I need to do, create a volume of this. So here, I'm just creating a volume. I'm just selecting a volume. So create. Exactly. So here, same thing, new volume. Guys, at the end, now you have two new disks. Now you have two new disks from a target server. You didn't add it any disk. Now this disk, now guys, the biggest difference that I want you to remember is this. Now if I go into this server, I can see how many disks. I can see, I can see three disks here. Right? But guys, but guys, this last one point. But guys, here, if I right click on a server and go to setting, I have only one disk on this. One physical disk. And two, 
additional disks are coming from the target server. So they are virtual disks given to me. I can see three disks in computer, but one disk physically. So there is one physical disk, but for this computer has three disks here. So guys, this is how we configure target and initiator server.